curried meatballs are absolutely so delicious and so quick to make. I'm going to show you a lovely curry sauce using some pepper, vegetables and also some onion, garlic and some root ginger. But let's talk about the meatballs first of all. So I'm using the Irish Angus beef meatballs. Okay, so they're board beer quality assured. And this is them here. So they come from Jennings Butchers and Ballon Robe. That's where the meat comes from. And we're just going to seal these off in the pan. Now you can do this if you want to with pork meatballs, but I think the beef works really well. So I'm going to seal this off. We're using some nice rapeseed oil. I'm going to put some into my pan here. So I'm going to brown them off lightly. I'm not going to cook them fully, but we're going to cook them and finish them in the actual sauce. I have already some uh, made, but they are absolutely delicious. So I made them this morning. So I did. Okay. So just literally warm up the pan and I'm just going to empty them out. Just straight into the pan. Just be careful when you're doing that so that it doesn't skite you. So just be careful of that. Just lift out that last one there. So there's about 12 of those little, kind of like small little meatballs. And I think you need at least minimum of four proportion. It's totally up to you. Okay, for our curry sauce. So we're gonna lightly brown these. Then in the skillet pan, we're gonna make the curry sauce. So what I have is one onion finely diced. If you look at that, it's very finely diced, which is perfect. Or you can slice it, it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna crush two cloves of garlic and I'm just using just my garlic crusher here. So just literally put pressure on it, rock it over and back, and then just scrape it into the bowl. And the same for this here. So I've just peeled two cloves of garlic. Just go over and back a little bit. Good workout. And then that goes in, because I love garlic, so I do. You can put four cloves, it doesn't really matter. Uh, into this, yeah, we're gonna use this grater here. We're gonna use some root ginger. So root ginger, if you peel it uh, with a spoon or a knife, uh, the actual um, skin will come out, and then what you do, come off, excuse me, and then you wrap that in some cling film, and you can freeze that. So I'm literally gonna grate this just into the bowl, and then we're gonna start this cooking for the base. So I just literally switched off the pan. The skillet pan was getting a little bit too warm, because if it's too warm, it'll just burn the onion and the garlic. So watch the fingers. I'm putting pressure onto the bowl from the actual root ginger. I love ginger. So every so often, just shake, just gently. Just a nice little bit of a color just coming through onto the meatballs. Now, so grate this into the bowl. That should be enough. And then I'm gonna start cooking this way I am. So, uh, heat the pan again. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter in because the butter and the rapeseed oil give the most wonderful flavor. So that's already heated, you can hear that sizzle. So I'm not looking to really color that too much now, so I've just turn that down. I'm gonna put peppers into this. So I'm gonna use red peppers, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna cut them, roughly about the size of your thumb, or a little bit kind of thinner. So just remove the seeds. So I'm using the red and the green, it doesn't really matter, you use whichever you prefer, if it's all red you like, if it's green you like, if it's the yellow ones, it's totally up to you. Now we can turn that up, and we can start to put in the peppers. So just pop them in there, and give them a little shake. So I'm going to do all the peppers that I have here, okay? So just to recap, one small onion, a couple of cloves of garlic, we have some peppers, I'm going to use all these here. Shake the pan. We'll turn them over in a minute. I just want to get the curry sauce on. This is a great recipe that you can make ahead. The curry sauce on its own is so delicious and tasty, so it is. And it will keep, that's the beautiful thing about it. It will keep in your fridge or in your freezer. You know, in your fridge for about three to four days, easy. And then you can freeze it. Now, that's that. Okay, so we'll turn that up. Give that a little stir and just let that just cook away there just for a minute or two. And put the lid on that just to speed up the cooking process. That kind of creates steam. If you find that it's catching a little bit, it means it's browning too much, put a spoonful or two of water. So back onto our little meatballs. We'll flip these over. So this is the Angus beef. And for me, you know, we're so lucky in Ireland we have some of the best beef in the world. It's board beer quality assured. So Jenny's Butchers, I've been down in Ballon Robe to visit them and to see their whole um, setup and all, so very impressive. And uh, I think meatballs are a very a lovely comfort food. And they're a great kind of food for, a comfort food for all the family that they'll enjoy. This is no way spicy. 
It's a very, very simple curry sauce. I'm just literally going to turn them over there and just let them brown away. Now you could put butter into that. Okay, so back on to our curry sauce. Give it a little stir. Now we're going to start to put in our lovely spices. So I want to talk to you about these two gorgeous spices. So the mild curry powder and the turmeric. They're both from a company based not alone called Oko. So they're all organic, really like their products. If you like a really spicy curry, you can put in the harissa or you can put in some chili. So I'm going to put in one large spoonful of turmeric. And be careful with turmeric because it will stay in if you get any on your chopping board or anything like that. This is all organic. I love the combination of the coconut and the curry powder. So two spoonfuls of the curry powder. And I'm literally just going to let that just kind of coat all the vegetables. And then we're going to add in our lovely chopped tomatoes. So the chopped tomatoes I'm using everyone it's a San Marzana tomatoes, okay? So they're from Puglia in Italy, which is down at the bottom, the heel. So it's the intense heat, the sunshine, that gives the most beautiful flavor. Gonna be a little bit noisy when I put this in. Now into that, I'm just gonna stir that through. Uh, I'm not adding any flour, because I don't want this too thick. But if you're gonna double this recipe, you can all, always thicken it with a little bit of corn flour, which works really, really well. So see the way I'm just combining all the spices and the tomatoes all together so if you want to use the simply better plum tomatoes you just simply crush them with your hand and put them into that they're the same variety of tomatoes they're just the plum ones that they are and um, we're going to put in some mango chutney which gives lovely sweetness so i'm going to put in three spoonfuls of that so again this is from an irish company wexford preserves they're based in wexford and then another company actually in wexford thai gold i love their products so this is their coconut milk we're going to use that it's lovely it's creamy i'll just show it to you it's one of my favorites it's really really gorgeous lovely if you cook rice pudding so it was actually done stores who introduced me to this over 20 years ago we use their products in the cookery school in the restaurant they're just the best now you stir this through everyone and then really important is we're going to put the juice of a lime in this so it counteracts the sweetness because with the mango chutney it's quite sweet so if you see the kind of color, you get the lovely tomatoey color, but you get the turmeric, that gorgeous kind of light, kind of golden brown yellow. And I'm just gonna stir that there. Now, so just the meatballs, remember I want to cook them in the sauce. I don't want to cook them. I'm just literally sealing them off on the pan so I can switch that off now. So lime, I love lime in this. And this is a really, um, a lovely kind of a fragrant not in no way spicy nothing like that this is my little juicer here so we're just going to put two of the half of limes and the lime is important because if you don't use the lime it can be a little bit sweet you could use lemon but lime is more fresh i think so now with this recipe here i already have one done i actually made it this morning so i did before i done my video so it will keep so you bring this to the boil and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to add in all my lovely meatballs that's going to go in there Put that out of the way and then just literally stir this through so you're kind of nestling them in there that they're going to be covered with the sauce so what i like to do is to bring this to the boil and let this simmer so i'll probably put it onto the lower ring and this takes about 20 minutes 20 25 minutes and what happens it begins to reduce and if you think it's a little bit too runny or thick you can thicken it with some corn flour so just bring that gently to the boil and then you let that simmer away and don't forget to stir it really important so this is a big ring this is a medium i'm going to put it onto the small ring here and just let that just gently cook away you could if you were stuck for time uh, pop this into the oven at about 180 and it'll take about 20 25 minutes up in 30 minutes in the oven but i don't mind this morning i'm going to show it to you just on the actual on the actual low hob like that and every so often i kept stirring it so we have already one done i'm going to bring this over we're just going to warm this up this is what it looks like i've cooked this for 25 30 minutes so it's not too um too runny can you see that i didn't put any corn flour no flour nothing like that your meatballs will shrink a tiny little bit but the most important thing is to taste it so i've just put a little bit of salt and pepper into that we're going to finish it with some lovely herbs so i'm going to put on a little bit of flat leaf parsley and some coriander 
So coriander is one of these herbs you either love or you don't like. Um, some people love it. I'm going to show you the technique of chopping. So you roll all this up here using your big chef's knife. Curve your fingers and then you just chop it really, really nice and fine. Now to get it super fine, what you do is you hold the knife and you rock it over and back. So this is the large knife. And then just what you're going to do with the large knife then, you're going to use the board, scoop it up, and that's just going to go into our sauce. And we're going to stir that through there. Then we're going to serve it up with some steamed rice. So this needs to come to the boil. So this is the runny one here, as you can see. It's going to just gently simmer away there. And then I'll stir it every so often. If you think it's cooking a little bit slower, you can move it to a higher ring. But the most important thing is that it doesn't boil rapidly. So nice and gently. And it will intensify, it will thicken up. Honestly, it's so delicious. So a little bit of black pepper. Some sea salt. Just a couple of pinches of sea salt. And then we're good to go. So with this, I'm just serving this with a little bit of braised rice. So I have my little trivet. So if you're putting anything hot onto anything that's wooden or anything like that, make sure you get this. It's a small little clever little thing that'll store well in your kitchen. It's a small tiny little trivet for hot pans, even a bacon tray, anything like that. So I'm using some basmati rice. I cooked it with some water, half a stock cube, a little bit of butter and then some salt and then just brought it to the boil for about maybe five minutes and um, let it in, um, give it a whisk, keep the lid on it, switch off the gas, and then that's it there, it's lovely and fluffy. It's, it's just simple, it's the way I cook rice at home. I love rice. So we're gonna serve this up. As I say, it's comfort food at its best. Lovely fluffy rice. You can have this with some noodles. You can have this, I'll just make a little bit of a, a, little bit of a hole here in the middle and then just our meatballs. So again, I think you need at least four to five. So bring this over here. And then we're getting lot, lots of the vegetables. So I just put in peppers, you could use red onions, you could use courgettes, you could put in some chickpeas into this. I'm gonna get some of the extra sauce. So if you see that it's not too thick, it's not too gloopy. And then just drizzle that over. I'm sure I might, might as well give one more meatball for luck. You know, there's just, for me, full of flavor, delicious. This is a little bit different here. What I'm gonna serve with this is some toasted flaked almonds just on top. So just toast them under the grill or in a dry pan. And then just a little bit of more fresh coriander. Just literally just tear it and just literally just arrange it on top. So you have that lovely kind of fluffy rice that'll absorb all that lovely sauce with the peppers and the meatball should be really, really soft delicious full of flavor so if you make it like i've done it here see the way that's simmering there and don't forget to stir it that's really important or else it'll begin to catch at the bottom there and stick so that's my curried meatballs very very simple i'm using the beef meatballs are simply better angus beef with some lovely fluffy rice some peppers in that toasted flaked almonds i think that's a recipe that all the family will enjoy happy cooking and enjoy